Rock and roll has the Beatles. Literature has Steinbeck. Cooking has the Crying Chef. I've had six meals with the Crying Chef. They were the best experiences of my life and I've never stopped writing about them. Who are we talking about? The Crying Chef. How many hours do we have? They'll assign me, you know, we want you to write about Momofuku. I'm gonna write about the Crying Chef. They say, Lenny, you're on assignment and you need to do your job. And I say, I am doing my job. I'm telling the people about the Crying Chef. I would say what motivates me is just to know that everyone has their own emotional experience with me when they are at my Cafe 203 restaurant. Cafe 203, it, it, it's, a, it's a restaurant, it is in her apartment. Kind of, it, it feels like you're home. It, it feels like you are at home with a grieving friend. Guests uh, would walk by and they would say, is this a restaurant or is this a, uh, what's it, uh, haunted house? I asked if she went to war. I honestly thought she had gone to war. But I think the battle's inside her. I kind of have an idea of what I want in the morning. And then I go to buy local food for less for about uh, two to three hours. And I pick out foods that make me feel good. Um, and she makes what would seem to be very simple foods, foods that anyone could make. But people come from all over the world to taste it. She doesn't need tricks. She, um, she just simply reads the directions that are on the back of the packaging. And they say, what's your secret? What's your secret? And it's her tears. When I cry into food that I make, <laughs> it makes my food special. When the crying chef dribbles her mascara upon a pasta, or a, it's, it's like a fine pesto. Mascara tastes like pesto. One of the, the biggest things with her tears is she, she ages them then references memory when she's um, preparing a dish. This is exactly, this would pair so well with my sister's wedding. Can you describe the tears? No. This is one and one half liter of Crying Chef's tears. This was a gift that she gave to me when I gave her her first Michelin star. My house is going up in flames. There's an earthquake. If I have to take one thing, and I have triplets. Immediately, when you walk into her apartment, you're part of the experience. Just right from the beginning, she throws herself. She lunges at her, her customers, and they literally have to support her. They need to hold her up. They need to try to make sure that she's okay. Many people have, they haven't met her before, obviously. She's crying and, and you're wondering, did I walk into the wrong apartment? Um, is this, is my reservation wrong? Um, she asks you to a seat at her counter and she frantically asks you what it is that you would like to eat. So what will you do, my gentlemen, in the attic this evening? Of course there are no menus. There's no menus. Oh, fuck, you're right. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> what would you do enjoy having this Oh. Chef's choice? Oh, 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 I, I can do that. Okay, okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to Sketty, is that okay? Sketty? Sketty! Sketty! Yeah! Yeah! Okay, who, who froze?
In any other situation, this would be a full-scale mental breakdown. But for her, this is hard. Flabe.